Hi guys, welcome to Motivational Monday. Today I want to talk about something that impacts all of us, and that's love. But I want to talk about it in a way that helps us understand how to love the people that we love. And that's through talking about the different love languages that we all speak. But sometimes when we share our love language or when we receive the love language of others, it's almost like it gets lost in translation. And I really think if we take the time to understand what the love language is of those around us and even asking them, what do you consider your love language? And understanding that this is the only way that they will hear that you love them. And it's not even just with your romantic partner. It's also about your family. It's also about your friends. It's about anyone that you say that you love and understanding that they receive your love in a possibly different way than you receive the communication of love as well. So as many of you guys may know, there are five different love languages. You have words of affirmation, acts of service, receiving gifts, quality time, and physical touch. And I wanted to take the time to break those down in a way that everyone has a chance to understand what that may look like and be able to identify that in the people around you and the people that you love. So the first word of, um, the first love language is words of affirmation. So these are the type of people who always want to hear um, the congrats. They always want to hear that they did something right. They always want to hear um, you tell them that you value them. They want to hear you tell them verbally that you appreciate them. They want to hear the words come out of your mouth. Otherwise, sometimes they may feel like you don't love them. And even when it's as simple as, you know I love you, this is how you're able to help them understand and feel feel loved because at the end of the day you want them to feel your love not just know that it exists so if there's someone in your life who's always asking um how am i doing am i okay with this what do you think about my performance what do you think about my delivery what did you think about this that or the third they want to to hear it and it doesn't cost you anything but two seconds of your time to tell them, hey, you did great. I think you did good. When you did this, I really appreciated it. I felt supported when you did this for me. I appreciate you. And sometimes these words of affirmation are beneficial to any relationship we have, even if that's not their primary love language. Everyone wants to hear that they're doing a good job. Everyone wants to hear the good and not just what they're doing wrong. And so taking that time out of your day to acknowledge the, the um, and affirm the things that those around you are doing um, is very beneficial to everyone's morale around you. The next love language is acts of service. So some people see love when you do things for them, when you cook them dinner or when you take out the trash for them or if you open the door or you send them a thoughtful note or you, whatever it is, making sure that you, if this is someone's love language of someone that you care about, taking the time to make a conscious effort to doing things for them and understanding that is how they feel loved. And recognizing that if acts of service is their primary love language, they may not even receive the other things that you may be trying to do to show your love. However, if you if this is their primary love language, you have a chance to, to use your energy wisely. You don't have to prove your love through maybe words of affirmation or anything like that or any of the other love languages if this is what they're telling you that they need from you. The next love language is receiving gifts. I think this is the one love language that gets overused because not everybody is the type of person who receiving gifts is effective. So if you have someone whose love language is um, words of affirmation or acts of service, 
you buying them gifts is a waste of your money. However, if you have someone if you're in your life whose primary love language is giving gifts or receiving gifts, you have to understand that it doesn't always have to be an extravagant gift. It may be, hey, I got your favorite candy at the store today. It could be, I bought you flowers. It could be, I bought you lunch today. Whatever that gift is, just understand that that is how they're translating love from you. Um, the next prime, the next love language is actually my primary love language, and it's quality time. For me, the people that I feel like I love the strongest are the people I spend the most time around. Whether that's um, co-workers that I'm close to, whether that's sorority sisters that I have a close bond with, whether that's friends, family, how I receive love is through quality time, phone calls, um, spending time together, hanging out together, making time for one another is how I receive and how I often communicate love. And it doesn't, again, it doesn't have to be romantic love. Any kind of love for me is translated through, are we spending time together? Do we make time for each other? Do we spend time enjoying each other's company or presence? And then the last love language is physical touch. So while quality time is my personal primary love language, physical touch is probably my lowest love language. I don't like to be hugged. Like if I didn't reach out for a hug, please don't hug me. Like don't just walk up to me and hug me. Like it makes me uncomfortable sometimes because I believe in my personal space. Now within a romantic aspect, obviously physical touch is a little different, but for friends and even family, like I'm just not a hugger. But you have people who just want to either hold your hand or they want to hug or, you know, you have people who are just huggers. Um, actually, one of my associates at work, she is the biggest hugger. And she will walk, and it's a little, little, little lady. And everyone calls her Granny. And she won't let you call her anything but Granny. For the longest time, I didn't even know what her real name was. Um, but she'll always run up to you and give you a hug and kiss you on the cheek. For me, I'm uncomfortable. Like, why are you touching me, ma'am? But I had to recognize that's her love language. That's how she communicates that she loves and cares about you. And you have to learn to find that compromise with the people that you care about. Maybe not necessarily your associates at work, but understanding that the people that you love, love differently, and they want to be loved differently. And I really feel like the golden rule of treat people how you want to be treated, we need to adjust that rule. I, I think we should treat people how they want to be treated because at the end of the day, how I want to be treated is different from how you want to be treated and vice versa. So if I really care about this relationship, family, friends, romantic, whatever type of relationship, I have to say, how do you want to be treated? And I have to make an effort to do that. And if I don't, if I force you to accept how I would want to be treated, it's really not benefiting you. It's not supplying your need of what you need out of this relationship. Now, there are certain things where that treat people how you want to be treated makes sense. Like being a loyal person, being trustworthy, keeping your word. Those are some of the basics as far as being a human. I would like to say, but when it comes down to the specifics, if I want to have spent time together and you want to hear words of affirmation, that's where the miscommunication comes in because I'm treating you how I would want to be treated, but you're not receiving it the same way because your love language is different and it's okay to have a different love language. You just have to understand what that person's love language is and make an effort to communicate in the way that they hear you. What I want you guys to do is drop below what is your love language. So the five love languages are words of affirmation, acts of service, receiving gifts, quality time, physical touch. So those are the five love languages that are 
commonly accepted. I want to hear what your love language is, and I'm going to challenge you to ask those around you, what is their love language? Thanks, guys.